Hello and welcome to tutorial number two of the Peggle in Pygame tutorial series. This week we'll be implementing a basic game loop and game states. This will allow us to start getting input from the player and use that input to update and draw our objects. A conventional game loop must perform four basic tasks. It must process events like key presses, window resizes and window closes. It needs to update objects, so if you have a velocity, modify the positions using that velocity. Draw the objects, which is usually done by clearing the whole screen to like a solid colour or an image, and then drawing every object. This can be optimised though. It's far more ideal to only update parts of the screen, as Pygame is pretty slow at blitting large images, especially with Perpixel Alpha. Then finally we need to tell the game to wait any excess time to match the desired frame rate. So say if we wanted to reach a frame rate of 80 frames per second, this means we would need to have a frame take 12.5 milliseconds. So we can check how much time has elapsed during a frame, say 3 milliseconds and then find out how much time we need to wait excess to get to 12.5 milliseconds frame time. And in our case, this is going to be a wait of 9.5 milliseconds. Pygame has an inbuilt function in the clock class called tick to do this for you, but it's still good to understand what's happening. Before we jump into the code for this video, I want to go over a few things that were mentioned in the comments of the last one. A guy by the name of Ufa left a comment with some useful info about my vector class, and we're going to make a quick change before we begin to that class. And also John Tish mentioned that there is a uh, inbuilt vector class in Pygame already, so we could have just used that one. But uh, it's good to kind of do it ourselves once at least, so it's not entirely useless. I'd also like to point out that I've created a GitHub repo for this tutorial series where you can find the source after every single tutorial. The link for this will be in the description. And at the request of another viewer, I've created a Discord server, despite us not having that much of a community yet. I'm hoping that with time, this Discord server will be a place that people can come to to ask for help in all areas of programming. Or to just chill out and look at other people's cool projects. The human to bot ratio in the server definitely needs a bit of work though. <laughs> Anyway, so let's start with the amendment to the vector class. This should be pretty simple. We're going to be creating a additional overload for our vector class. It will overload the underscore underscore neg underscore underscore function, which is going to replace the negate functions that we declared statically. So let's quickly move that code up to there. And then now if we just place a minus in front of our vector, uh, we can see that we get the inverse. You also noted that attribute lookup, i.e. using like self.x and self.y, can be somewhat slow along with the isInstance function that we use for our operator overloads. Uh, but I don't think these are going to have too much of a noticeable hit on our performance, so I'm just going to leave them as they are for now. Right, so let's go on with making our game loop. So we'll import pygame and we'll initialize it. We're then going to want to use the pygame.display.setMode function to create a window and return a screen sort of surface variable that we can draw to. The parameters for this function will be the screen width and height as an int tuple. We're going to pass 960 by 720 as our window size. And the other parameter is for optional flags, so you can specify like full screen or double buffered or anything like that. Uh, we'll create an outrunning variable, which is going to be a boolean, and it's going to be the condition for our while loop. So we'll set it to false when we want the game to stop running. Uh, we'll also need to write the accompanying quit and close functions after the loop, so things shut down properly and we don't get any errors in the console. We'll also want to create our delta time variable, which is going to hold the time past each frame in seconds. We're going to create a pygame clock variable, which as mentioned earlier is going to be useful for the tick function, so finding out how much time has passed and then waiting, so we can achieve a steady frame rate. And we're also going to use this clock variable to update our delta time variable. For now, I'm going to hard code the value of our FPS, which is going to be set to 144. But obviously, you can create a variable for this if you want to. Right, so the first thing we want to do in our game loop is iterate through all the events that Pygame has received and stored in the event queue that frame. So we're going to do this by looping through all the elements in the list returned by the pygame.event.get function. So for each event, we'll check its type and check further information if necessary. For example, if we want to check whether the window close button has been pressed, i.e. the red X, we'll check the event's type is pygame.quit. If so, then we'll set our app running variable to false. And let's quickly add the same functionality for the escape key. We'll check for a pygame.keyDown event and then access the event key variable and check if it's the pygame.k underscore escape key. And then just do the same thing as before and set the app running variable to false. And now we have a window that pops up and we can close it by pressing the red X or just pressing escape. We'll then create functions to update and draw our objects. For now, I'll just leave these blank, except for a screen clear to a random color in the draw function. I'm going to use like a uh, kind of dark grayish color. And then we'll update the whole display with pygame display.flip outside of the draw function in like the main kind of loop. Now that we have the most basic game loop set up, let's create a quick example to show off our events. 
Let's make a circle follow our mouse whenever we press the space bar. We'll create one vector for the circle's position and one for its velocity. We we'll also want to create a, a boolean variable to dictate whether the circle is currently following the mouse and a mouse position variable to statically store the position of the mouse at the start of each frame. This mouse position variable will be updated using the pygame.mouse.get underscore pause function, which will return an int tuple of length two. Right, and then in the event loop, we're gonna add another key type to the key down check. We're gonna check for the uh, key pygame.space and then set the boolean to true in that case. And then we're gonna check for another type of event called pygame.keyup, which is gonna detect when a key is lifted. And then, so we're gonna get the event type and check for the spacebar as well. And here we'll set the ball to false. Then in our update, we can get the direction of the mouse by getting the difference. Then, uh, so just one minus the other. Then normalizing that difference to get the normalized direction vector. And then we can add this direction to the velocity and then multiply it by some large scalar so we get some you know decent movement because obviously a vector of unit one is going to be a single pixel in this space and then multiply by delta time as well just so we get time consistency and then we'll update the position with the velocity also multiplied by delta time now we just want to add a check for our boolean so circle following mouse before all of this stuff happens Finally, we can get this position in the draw function and just draw a circle or something there using our get in tuple function or make in tuple rather. Okay, so we have our demo for our game loop working and you can see that there. So now we're going to move on to states. So for our states, we're going to be using enums. Enums or enumerations are basically a way of, well, it's essentially just like an int that you can assign a kind of string tag to. And they're really useful for things like states because you can assign one, say, you know, main menu. And then in the code, you can say if state equals main menu, go to the main menu. But it's a lot faster because it's essentially doing an int comparison as opposed to a string one. So let's create enums for our states then. So we're going to create one for the game state, one for the menu state, and then one for the play state. So the game state will be holding a one for menu, playing, and then just going to add level editing. And then the one for the menu state is going to be main, level select, edit select, power up select, settings and credits. And then the play state is going to be spawning pegs, aiming, dropping, adjusting score, and game over. We're also going to be using enums for the ability types and various other things just because they're useful to try and like define different things. So with these defined, we can create a, an instance for each type, and then we may as well just keep them static at this point. So if we throw one in the update loop, say for example we have to be in a certain state, so let's make it so we have to be in playing to have the circle following our mouse or updating. And yep, so that's pretty much all we need to cover this tutorial. We've done the game loop and states. It might be better to locate these in another file just to kind of clean things up a bit, so I'm going to do that. So we're going to move these to a file, just call it states.py, yep. and that pretty much wraps it up. I'm not a massive fan of having all these variables statically defined, but I don't really see an alternative, so if you want to suggest me something, feel free to go and check out the Discord and leave me a suggestion in there. But yeah, until next time, remember to check out the Discord, and next week we're going to be doing a ball class, so I'll see you then.